Tracy, I think I think it was you the last time you were starting back up and there was a little crowd and I think you said I guess everybody heard I was preaching. I was, I was kind of you know this actually more than what I figured would be here tonight. <clears throat> yep. Anyway. Get in, it's going to be crowded. Yeah. All the way up yeah. The, the well, <clears throat> and thank y'all for moving forward because I really do have trouble hearing sometimes, and, and that's why I'll ask you to repeat it. I just hadn't given in to hearing aids yet, but I guess at some point. Uh, <laughs> did, uh, <laughs> huh? Anyway. Uh, Jody, since you made that comment, why don't you start us off with a prayer? Okay, so um, oh, about a month ago, I was sitting at the table. We were all eating with my kids and everything, and I, I had already kind of planned in my mind what I was going to teach, and I asked them, what do y'all think I ought to teach about? Well, boy, they voiced their opinion real quick, and, well, you need to do this. I saw this, and, and what every one of them said is it needs to be like around a character study um, Bible characters, lots of pictures, you know, simple, elementary. And, you know, some, sometimes in an adult Bible class, sometimes it's been good for me, even just as little as I've studied. I'm, I'm telling you, it's helped me, and I've been studying the Bible for a long time, sometimes to get it from the top down and just see the big picture and kind of be able to categorize things a little bit better. And so I, I hope as we go through this, this is not too simplistic for you, but I think hopefully even looking at the characters, we're going to try to apply it to our lives now today and, and uh, how it can help us learn. Um, but let's see here. Now, I hadn't used this. There we go. All right. So <clears throat> how old is the earth? I said that? No. How old's the earth ballpark? 8,000. 8,000. 8,000. What happened to 30 million, you know, or whatever? Okay. All right. Um, so, really, um, based off of this, it's 6,000 here, the, here or there um, is what it looks like. And, and this Bible study right here divides it into to 2,000 on each side and four or 500 year in the middle, okay? Different periods. So to 2,000, so it's 2,000 up to Noah and then 2,000 from Christ to today. And then there's 500 year periods in between and that's what we're gonna study. We're gonna study some characters who's kind of the famous character in that little section there. Um, and then as we're studying this, you know, like they said, when they come up with about when they think um, Christ was born, you know, there, it's not December 25th, zero. You know, that's not it. But they're just getting the ballpark so we can, as we're studying when Corey's teaching or something like that and, and he's talking about Abraham, we can kind of get them as to where they are in history. Um, that's what was appealing to me when we started looking at it. Um, so if you look here at this first one, so we've got and before Noah, and they've got it at 2,500, but Noah's right around 2,000. Um, and then the next era is going to be 500 years later, Abraham, 500 years later, Moses, 500 years later, 
David, the prophets, 500 years right up until when Christ was born and then 2,000 years after that, okay? Very easily to see. Um, now, Blake was one of the ones that um, voiced his, uh, his opinion on what we should study, and, and he, I don't even remember exactly the story he talked about, but they were studying about Noah or someone, and he still remembers those pictures up there. So um, I learned by pictures also a lot, um, and so I, I hope this helps y'all. Okay, so uh, the next one here is getting into the Bible eras that we're talking about here, and it's summing up, like I said, human history started, had a first 2,000 year period running to Adam, to Abraham, and then the end of that 2,000, which runs to us, there's four 500 year periods on there. And so if you look on um, the third page there, so I've come up here real quick, and without going back and looking, who would be the first Bible hero in that first era that we come up to? Huh? Noah. All right. Noah, no, it's Noah. All right, and then that would be in which year? Of course, don't look up. I forgot. Did that move? No. What year? Either 2,500 or 2,000. Um, so it's a 2,000 year up there. Who's the next Bible hero? Abraham. So that would be what year? 2,000 to, let's, let's start with 2,000, and then that'd be about 1,500 BC, okay? And then the next hero, <laughs> Moses. And then that would be what year? 1,000. Okay, all right. Y'all are getting it now. And then the fourth one? David. Okay, David, and that would be at around 1,000. Then we have um, the prophets, uh, and I'm sorry, David's beginning at 1,000 and goes to 500. And then the prophets are the last 500 years. That's kind of the quiet period um, right before who's our last character. Jesus, Jesus, and um, that begins in what year? Zero. Zero. Way to go. Basically. Huh? Basically. Yeah. Um, okay, and let's see. Some of this here. And then you, the, the characters that we decide, and you know, and I hate to call them characters. I don't, I, and they refer to it as a character study, but these are people, and, and I, I, I feel like if I call them characters, you're thinking like it's fictional. These are real people that live. Um, they picked out 28, and then you can see how they're divided between the Old Testament and then the New Testament in there. And then as we go through and we study each one of them, we kind of want to know when were they born, um, what era, when, when were they in our history of our Bible history, um, what famous things did they do? What are some of the um, famous quotes that they might have said? And then just kind of relating that to some of the things that we can learn and apply to our lives. Okay, so our first one that we're going to study is going to be on who would be our first character? Adam. There you go. All right. Um, okay, and so we're going to start off and we're going to read, everybody turn to Genesis, <clears throat> and I did not write my <clears throat> verse on here, we're going to start with Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to start with verse 26, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over the cattle, over all earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 
And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Um, what does it mean to create? We are created in God's image. Do we look, is he look like me, kind of chubby? And <laughs> no, we have a spirit of soul similar to you. Okay, all right, good. A spirit of soul. In his likeness, okay. Um, we can be righteous. In what way are we like him? We can be righteous. We can choose okay. to be righteous. All right, so let's compare ourselves. When I'm asking you in his image, or is my cat at my house comparable in image? Why? Because he I was on, walking on all fours or what? We have the ability to reason. Reason, yes. Okay, think like God. Free will. Free will. Okay. I think one thing we don't put enough emphasis on, we are created, we have a beginning. Yes. We are eternal. Okay. So when, once we start we're getting starts, we're eternal from that point. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we're eternal. Mm -hmm. Our cat, my, my cat's name is Kitty Kitty. <laughs> and Kitty Kitty, when he's dead, that's it, right? Okay. Um, what, what else? What are some other things that we're like God? I think that are important that we hadn't hit yet. Okay, we we think we can think, reason with things. Love, love. exactly. There's one of them. Love, um, but my cat loves me. He does. He gets right next to me all the time. It's not the same thing, is it? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Where animals and things like that, they don't know right from wrong. Like, mm -hmm. if we sin, we have the ability to come forward and, and ask God for forgiveness for those sins. Where animals, they do wrong, they can't. Okay. Um, and that's illustrated real quick with Cain and Abel. And we realize, because we're different, that... God has instilled in us that murdering someone is not good in God's eyes, okay? And the value of a human life. Um, one of the things that I saw in here, and, and I have to keep it in my mind too sometimes, I, it, since I studied it last week, is thinking that every one of us are created in God's image, okay? So some of us don't care whether God is here or not. I'm, I'm pointing outside. I'm not pointing back there at Jody, uh, but some of us don't care, but we're still all created in God's own image. God cares about every one of us, and even the hardest person he cares about, and that, it's, it's hard to do that when we're going through McDonald's and someone's not fast enough getting us our food, you know. Um, but seriously, if you keep that in mind, that these are God's children here, wherever we meet them out there, um, we should be treating them in, in that like manner. Um, okay, and I want to start up here. Um, and this is in chapter 2. <clears throat> and I'm going to start with verse 6. But a mist used to rise from the earth and the water, the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord formed man of dust from the ground. And he breathed in the nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Um, and the Lord God planted a garden toward the east in Eden. And there he placed man where he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God calls to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight of God, uh, pleasing to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also is in the middle, in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and from it divided into four rivers. The next three verses are talking about those rivers. Um, and then in verse 15, then the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden to cultivate it and keep it, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of this garden you may eat freely. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For that day that you eat of it, you will surely die. 
Um, so what are some of the claims to fame, if you had to say he was the first, what are the claim to fame for Adam? What has he done that we haven't done? Took the first breath, yes. He could have lived eternally. Could have lived body. eternal. Okay. He was the first to sin. He was the first man to sin. That's first true. First one to get married. First one to get married. Okay. He cultivated the garden of Eden. Eden. Um, he also named the animals. Yeah, he did. Have y'all ever thought about why he called yeah. a bird a bird? You know. Or giraffe. Yeah, giraffe. Uh, but he named the animals, yes. He actually walked with God. Yes. He yeah. With God yeah. On a personal basis. Yes. Yes. Um, later on, we talk about some of the things that he had there. But think about, um, you know, Corey, you take care of the grass outside. What if it was God's house? And this is God's house, I mean, as we're looking at it. What if it was the temple, and that was his garden right out there, and he spoke right to you and said, tend to my garden. Can you think of the awesome responsibility that you have to take care of the garden? Okay. Um, Jody. But at that point, everything was still perfect. Yes. So he was, he was living in a perfect world at that point. Mm-hmm. No. You can't. Think about living in a perfect world. Yeah. So no matter how much grass, you can be perfect. Right. Um, and later on, it was a burden for him. That was part of a burden that was put on, was tilling and, I mean, taking care of. It was part of the burden. Someone else raise their hand over here. Um, you know, and just... Having the river, uh, God provided for him on everything. He provided everything that he needed to live and for life, for food, everything that he wanted, the perfect scenario there. Um, and so, you know, as, as um, studying about this, th- this had some things in here, and, and th- this is not a perfect sheet. It did not come from the established Church of Christ, you know. So it's got a deal in there It says, do you believe that Adam and Eve had belly buttons, you know, and, you know, when I first read that, I I was like, what, and then I understand, that has nothing to do with our salvation, so I don't even want to talk about that, but I I didn't go through and exit out, it was on on our screen, Uh, it is interesting. Even though they were, he was tending the garden, uh, the Bible says that he was given dominion over all creatures. Okay. Right, right. Um, and that, that is something that we have to, and do we still have dominion over all the animals today? I mean, man does over dominion over the animals. Um, are we, should we still take care of God's earth today? Absolutely. Okay, so the values that are taught there are things that we need, we, we shouldn't, just trash the, a river, you know, for our good because we're just throwing our trash in there. I, I mean, I think these are things that are biblically taught that we're to take care of God's creation on there. Um, one of the things that I think was brought up earlier was that right now we're, we're still in a perfect world. What changes the perfect world? Sin? Okay. So he had... A perfect relationship, I, I don't remember if it was one of y'all two that said he's able to commune with talk, God, talk to God, perfect relationship with him. And then let's continue to read on here. Um, so in verse 18, then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. <clears throat> and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field. It's funny how it kind of goes off and, and um, 
formed every beast of the field and every bird of the sky and, and brought them to the man to see what he would call them, whatever the man called the living creature, that it was his name. <clears throat> and the man gave names to all the cattle, birds of the sky, every beast. But for Adam, there was not found a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. He slept. He took one of his ribs, then closed up his flesh, and then God fashioned from the rib and brought him a woman. Um, in verse 23, and the man said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this cause a woman shall leave his father and his mother, shall cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Um, and so this is the part here where, um, so was, how old were they when God formed them? Were they little kids? Okay. God created them. Um, so Adam and Eve are going to be the first ones that are going to be married. God's perfect union. God put them together. There was no marriage ceremony. It was created. This was a God. This was God's uh, course of action that they were going to be uh, man and wife. Um, and so then they've got this perfect utopia that they're in. And let's turn over to chapter 3. <clears throat> and the old serpent comes in. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. <clears throat> and he said to the woman, Indeed has God said you shall not eat from the tree of the garden. So do you think the serpent already knew that answer? He knew that answer, didn't he? Okay. And the woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said you shall not eat or touch it lest you die. So the serpent said to the woman, You shall surely not die, for God knows that in that day you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. <clears throat> when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was in the delight to her eyes, and the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit, ate, and she also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. And I'm going to pause right there. Okay, so how did, how did the serpent approach them, get them to do something that they knew was God didn't want? I'm sorry? Lust of the eye. Okay, lust of the eye. All right, because he said it looks pretty. Okay, it's appealing, uh, looking, and also to eat. He basically accused God. He said, has God told you this? Mm -hmm. yeah. So he put doubt on God that, uh, did God really tell you not to eat of everything? Um, he put doubt in there. He also changes it, too. How does he change it? You will not die. You will not die. Okay, so are we tempted similar to lust of the flesh, pride of the eyes? Are we similarly, do we, are we tested that way today ourselves? Okay, now how, how could Eve had not given in to her temptation? What would have been good for Eve to do to not give in to that temptation? I'm sorry? Walk away. Walk away, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Call on God. That's a good one. All right. And and ha I'm sorry, Philip. Okay, 
And the way I sum that up, that I'm, in other words, you go to God and what God has taught us to do is what we, what you should do to help yourself not go towards sin, okay? And today we do that by how do we go, how do we get closer to God today? Okay, well you can read the Bible. You, I would think studying and meditating on God's word on what he thinks is, is a good way for us. Praying is, is one that we do that. But I absolutely think the more you meditate on God's word, that's how you avoid the serpent. Okay? How did Jesus avoid the serpent up when he was being tempted? Scripture. Scripture. Okay? Um, so every time when he would come after, he would quote Scripture. Um, and at the very end, you know, that's, that's what drove the serpent or uh, the devil away. Um, and, and so just like Adam and Eve that were tempted back then, they gave in to this. Now, what did this do to the relationship between God and Adam? Severed that relationship, okay? Permanently? No? Okay. I'm talking about the relationship between God and Adam. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, how did God know that, and he probably already knew, I didn't mean that way, but in the Bible, when he came upon Adam, how did God know that they had partaken of the fruit? What did Adam do when God was coming? Huh? They were hiding. He was hiding. Okay, all right. And why was he hiding? Because he realized he was naked. He was naked before that, wasn't he? Their eyes were open. Okay. God knew that he had eaten of that. Who told you? And he said, who did he said told us? He said it was, I'm sorry? Eve. Eve. Lynn, yes, ma'am. You know, prior to this, what's interesting to me is that they had a different, they did not have an understanding of sin before this. Actually, there was no sin before this. Right. There was no understanding of sin. They knew that God had told them not to eat of the tree, but they really, I don't think, could possibly understand sin and what it meant. And, you know, in verse 3, verse 22, I mean, there was a change. Like you said, Adam knew to hide himself because he realized yeah. he was naked. Yeah. Prior to this, they didn't have the same kind of knowledge mm -hmm. that they had after this. In, in verse 22, it says uh, that the Lord God said, the man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Okay. So prior to that, they had no recollection that they were naked or that there was any anything about mm -hmm. being naked that mm -hmm. would, you know, or would lead to any kind of sin. And they didn't have the same understanding of sin before. They knew they weren't supposed to eat of the truth. Okay. But things changed with the sin. Yeah. But still he had rules, though. Yes. He could not eat of that yes. fruit. That's what separated them from there. But did you notice when, when God confronted them, he blamed the serpent. And then Adam blames God for giving him the woman. Right. So it's the, the thought that it's hard to take ownership when we mess up, mm -hmm. but we're better off if we take it that ownership. Okay, so let's just real quickly talk about sin. What does sin do to us personally when we've known we've done it and it's not out there yet? What do we do? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you're, you're not coming to God for prayer. You're still in sin. You're sitting there. What does sin do to us? Did you say hiding? Okay, hiding. Okay. And then when it comes out in the open... Somebody else's fault. What are some other reasons why you've done something 
and I'm not talking about you. No, right. You know, I was thinking too, though, if you see members of the church, you tend to avoid them because you have sinned. Say, say if you're not coming to church on a regular basis like you should, and I'm okay. just throwing that out there in general, I'm not saying anybody to you. Right. But then you see, I see you, say it's me, I mm-hmm. see you. I know you're going to say, why well, haven't you been coming to church? So right. well, I just go around the other way so I don't have to confront you. So you avoid what you should be seeking after. Okay, so sin separates us from God. What also, you said it makes you kind of get shunned societally. What happened to Adam because of his sin with regards to the Garden of Eden? He was thrown out. Okay, so it separates you from God. All right, now, where I wanted to come back with what earlier there. All right, so... God in his wisdom, um, so was God mad at Adam for years, for a century? How long? What, what was the next thing that God did? And we didn't read it, but he gave them clothes. He he gave them clothes. clothes. Okay. He still cared about them. He still cared about them. He wanted them to do right. He gave them right. their punishment, and then they exactly. went on. And apparently there was some type of um, <clears throat> repentance that had to take place mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Because you see with Cain and Abel, the sacrifices that are put into place. Yeah. So God had to put something into place for them because sin was now going to be a problem. Okay. Um, now, the perfect world, what should Adam have done when he realized he had done something wrong? I'm sorry? Yes. So you're talking about towards God and ask for forgiveness. So... When you realize that you've done something wrong, the sooner you can come back and ask for forgiveness. Yes, sir, Sam. I thought he said he blamed the woman first. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's an all the blame game there. Uh, it is her fault, I think, but um, he didn't, still didn't have to take it, did he? He knew it was wrong, too, didn't he? Okay. God told him. Well, she knew because she right. told the right. serpent what it, right. uh, anyone, anyone but that tree right, right there. She knew the rules. Right. She knew. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. One thing that they didn't have at that time that we know now consequences. Yeah. You know, I know God tells no. you, know, you just surely die, mm-hmm. but they really didn't know true consequences okay. for doing something you're not supposed to do. Okay. Like children, you tell them you do that and then you spank it. All right. You know, that kind of thing. They yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's what I was kind of alluding to, too, as well, the consequences. Eve's, Eve, women, they have, you know, great consequences in childbirth. Men, in a sense, have it worse in the sense that you have to work with your hands for food. And in the biblical sense, and I'm not being chosen, I'm just saying, men were the breadwinners, women were the uh, childbirth. And so in that sense, whose responsibility is great or is well, I started grinning when you told your story because... But, no, I'm not trying to open the can of no, water no. saying women are beneath or water. No, I mean, I'm just saying it's... When, what it's she tough. said, though, was that they didn't know the consequences. Right. They didn't know the consequences. And I, I think about, and I don't remember which child it was, but um, if y'all have had this feeling before, the first time you spank your child, um, and I remember I started spanking their legs, and they don't know any better. Their, their eyes are this big, and they're, they're just standing right there. They don't run. She was just shocked. But, so they didn't know the consequence of what they had done. But they, they knew the next time they probably bolted before I got there. But yes, ma'am. I think the point, uh, another point I'm trying to get is they had been told the consequence. Yes. But they hadn't actually experienced it. Okay. Like you were saying, the first thing. Mm-hmm. They hadn't Right. Right. Um, okay, let's. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm not going to go to the next page because we're. I wanted to hit one or two more points on my list here. <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. I was thinking of two. Before God made woman out of man, he had 
that made any of the beings. Can you imagine being the only being alive? Yeah. At that time. How that was affected. Well, Okay, but also when you're when you're saying, do you think Adam really knew the consequence of, of, that, all of humanity would be. In sin because of what he did right there. I mean, you're talking about not knowing and the, the enormity of that, decision right there. Um, sin inevitably produces separation. Um, <clears throat> this last um, and you know I, I think this is all simple because we're just learning about Adam but then I'll, I'll finish up this next week whenever we get over there but we get into the New Testament and we start hearing things comparing um, and contrasting Adam with who Jesus and if you just start open in the Bible and you read in there and you you see that Adam was the first Adam and then um, the second Adam brought us this. You know, you don't know what they're talking about right here, but Adam brought us what? Life or death? Death. Who brought us life? Christ. Okay. Um, and, I, and I think even though this is so simple, but it's so important in the whole story of everything as to how this begins and how it's going to end up at the end. Um, and, that, I mean, that's what impressed me about the simplicity of this right here. And especially over in, um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ, all will be made alive. And it just really ties it all together there. Um, and, I, and, and right at the end, I want to go back and say these are not characters. These are not fictional characters. They're real people that, that, that lived. Um, and their temptation was that that tree, the fruit was good for food, pleasing to the eye, and desirable for wisdom. And as we talked about, the same temptation we have is the lust of the flesh, which comes in many ways, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And those are, there's no new thing under the sun, you know. And everybody um, said, well, we have the internet, and we've got this, and sin is sin, it's the same way, and... Things tempt us, and how can we avoid it? How can we avoid it? Seeking, seeking God, turn away. Or you said run away earlier, um, but seeking God is definitely a way. And then praying. The more you fill up yourself by going after God, the less you'll have a chance to come in there. Um, and and I really like. It's been I don't know. We haven't been in church for over a year. Um, in class, and it's probably six months before that since I studied, it was good to study again. I mean, it, it really seemed like it's been a long time since I've studied this much. Um, anyway, it's been good. Anybody else have any comments? Rebecca. First Timothy, uh, chapter two. First Timothy chapter two. It says, Adam was not deceived. Okay. Was. Okay. Adam sinned without being deceived. Right. Okay. Okay. Whereas Eve was deceived. She was she deceived. She shouldn't have been deceived. Yeah. But she was. Yeah. And it kind of, in chapter 3 in Genesis, when Adam says, uh, the woman that she gave me caused me to sin, God doesn't respond to that, but he turns to the woman and he says, What have you done? Yeah. She says, I was deceived. He then condemns Satan. He tells the woman that through her, Right. Adam was being belligerent at that point. Yeah. You gave me this one. Yes. Caused me to sin. Right. He had sinned without being deceived. Right. But the, the, he does seem to give a blessing to the woman that salvation could come to her. Uh, 
Through the woman? Through the woman. Uh-huh. Yeah. And of course, it did come through her seed, not through Adam's seed. Yeah, right. You know, there's another thing. It kind of predicts about it, that Adam and Eve were the first people to have a Yeah, right. He was able to influence her and talk her into something that she knew was right. Yeah. Okay, appreciate your comments.